Happy Friday, everybody. Hope you had a good week. I'm Kathy. Welcome to Yarn with Heart today on May 24th. Um, I'm so happy you are all here and very grateful to be getting to know you on YouTube. What a fun time it is and I really look forward to Fridays seeing you here with me, reading your emails and comments. It is honestly such a highlight of my week. Um, this week's video will be all about Knit City. What a wonderful time. Um, I cannot show everything about it as there were over 100 vendors there. And hope that many of you will pop over to Judy's channel that's at Judy Judy's creations in crochet and see her video about knit city as she has some amazing yarn to share I have some things about yarn and also some interesting non yarny things that caught my eye um, since the tropical bird make-along and the bird cover of the month make-along are both coming to midweek, this coming week, I will have those items ready for submission by May 28th, and I will show them on next week's Friday video, um, so that this video won't be too long. Today will be all about Knit City. Uh, next week will also be about my prayer shawl for the first Friday in June meet up with friends and some hat and scarf sets for donations. Also updates on the mystery make-alongs that I started last month. For those that are new to the channel, one of those mysteries is a blanket and the other mystery is a shawl. Um, if you subscribe, and ring the notification bell. You won't miss the next video on May 31st. So just to start out, to let you know about this chat about Knit City, um, I will be talking about 12 of the vendors. Um, I, two of my favorites are at the end of the video, so I hope you'll watch until then so you get to see about those two as well. Um, Knit City Toronto was an all-weekend event, and Jeff and I, we went on the Saturday, which was May 18th, 2024. Um, before talking about the day and letting you know that if any of these items or pictures are interesting to you, after watching the video, you can pop to the description box for information about how to find these vendors and their websites. Uh, again, there were over a hundred vendors and I could only feature 12 of them here. So please do check out Judy at Judy's Creations in Crochet and also the Knit City website to see more about the event. Uh, and fair warning, um, it's, it's uh, my favorite too. We're at the end of this video. Jeff and I, we left our apartment about nine o'clock and we drove to the Finch subway. Parking there was free on the weekend. So this was a much better choice for us than parking downtown. Um, I think parking downtown might have been at a premium because the Blue Jays were playing all weekend at home and I think that would have been quite an expense. So, yep, we took the subway. And then after a short walk, we were at the Weston Harbour Castle. I was so very excited and it was not hard to find where we needed to go. We just followed the people wearing handmade yarny things and who were carrying bags with fun yarny sayings on them. That's how I knew we were on the right path. Um, we were a bit later than some arriving, so there was hardly any lineup to get in. And we showed them our ticket and then we got our Saturday entry 
bracelets and we were ready for our adventure. We started at the left hand front corner of the uh, ballroom and then began working our way through the room and there were so many lovely things to see. Um, I will include pictures of some things that I found interesting along the way. So the pictures will show up here. Um, some of these were not yarn, yet at places that I might visit for the future purchases, I um, include those on this video as well. I did purchase some wool items as I have some friends in mind to gift those to. And I was so surprised by the number of non-wool things that I could look at and consider buying. Now the first yarn that I did buy was from a Quebec vendor, Malene Maison. I hope that that French pronunciation is okay. They had some luscious, 100% superwash merino and the two that I got were in this gray um, both fingering weight there we go and these were 400 meters 100 gram it says to use a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook or 3.5 millimeter needles. They were in their 25% off bin and that was quite nice. I think because there were a few little spots where maybe the dye didn't take or it might not have been quite the color they were looking for. This didn't bother me at all because the bit of speckling I think would go well with this other hank of yarn. So I thought that was good. And the other one was in baby alpaca and so very soft. This one is in the color berger allemand. And look at those beautiful colors in an almond and a bit of gray and some uh, beautiful aquas and almost a light um, steel blue. I love this one so much. And then I got this almond colored one called Bambi to go with. And again, these were in their 25% reduction area. It says 2.5 millimeter needles and 3.5 millimeter hook. Now, when I went to the website, I saw that they have an alpaca farm, which was quite interesting. And this beautiful yarn is what this mother and daughter team is best known for. So very happy that their alpaca is one of the choices that I made from here. Now, the next um, stop that I had to take a closer look at was called Big Blue Moma. And they have hand woven baskets. I'll put a picture over to the side. Um, artisans are paid fair market prices for their products. And I especially liked the natural items that they had in various sizes and for many uses. And a second similar location, there was a booth by Bustani with amazing woven items. Some were made of sisal, others made of recycled plastic, and there were others of a third material. And I've forgotten what that material is. The are, those artisans are from Kenya and they are provided fair wage and practices that empower. So, both of those will be uh, websites that I personally want to revisit. And I was really interested in all of those items that were available. Then I saw a couple of looms. One was a very large one and the second was small and used for darning. And if I can, I will add some video of the large loom here. 
if I can't do that video, <clears throat> then at least I will put in a picture. Uh, the smaller loom was by a company called Worth Mending. And on their about page, it says, the creative potential from working with mostly reclaimed, repurposed, upcycled, and salvaged material is endless and empowering. I go, and it goes on to say, a world where nothing is disposable. So I thought that was quite good. And even the darning loom that they uh, have available is made from reclaimed and repurposed materials. So I thought that was really quite good. Now, the next yarn that intrigued me most in the day, I didn't purchase it, yet I was totally surprised when I found out. Now, this yarn, it was from a vendor called Louie and Lola, and their flyer says they come from Tasmania. So imagine they came from Tasmania to Toronto. What a distance they traveled. And what surprised me most, they have possum yarn. Yeah. When I got home, I looked to their website and learned that all their yarn bases are from ethically produced farms and woolen mills, and everyone is committed to sustainable practices. So that was quite a surprise. I had never heard of possum yarn. Now, for those who spin their own yarn, there were also lovely hand dyes available. And I saw one in particular that caught my attention. This shop was named Akera. I took a couple of pictures, one close up, and a second picture of a wall of beautiful color. Um, I know that if I owned a spin, spinning wheel or a spindle, these colors would be simply irresistible. And I know a few people who do spin yarn, and I know they have birthdays coming. So I included this website in my list in the description box for sure. Now, something that was very exciting also happened just before meeting with some yarny friends. Um, I spun a wheel of chance at the Toronto Knitters Guild. Here we go. There's their information. Um, I won a prize. <laughs> I'm excited to say I will be receiving a free membership there for one year. And if you would like to check their website, there are so many benefits to being a member, including online classes and knitting socials. I am so surprised and grateful for the membership. And thank you so much to the Toronto Knitters Guild for their Wheel of Chance where everyone had chances to win various prizes. So thank you so much again. That was um, quite a nice surprise. And again, down in the description, it's in the description box if you wanted to take a peek about that. Now, then um, Judy from Judy's Creations in Crochet texted my husband, Jeff, to let us both know where to find her and Bonnie. We had been taught emailing back and forth about how much fun it would be to get together and to meet at the Knit City event. And Jeff and I were feeling, by that point, we had seen quite a few of the vendors. We were feeling overwhelmed by all the yarn and other lovely items that we'd seen. So it was perfect timing for a sit down. Um, we had a really nice chat. Um, Jeff and I met Bonnie and Judy C, and of course, Judy G from uh, Creations uh, in Crochet. And of all things, for the first time in decades, 
I got booted out of somewhere. The bunch of us were not dancing on the tables or ca causing a ruckus. We were just being too loud in something called a quiet room. <laughs> we left willingly and found a place where we didn't have to talk so quietly. And we had a really great visit. It was so wonderful to meet in person and I hardly wanted to leave them once, once we had a chance to chat together for a while. I really do hope we have a chance to get together again in the future. Oh, and before we had that visit together, I almost forgot to say, um, I also purchased one other thing, um, a little bracelet loom from Chip and Sparrow. Yeah, they had so many kits available. There were ones to make baskets and a couple of kits to make various size projects. Um, small ones of clouds and larger ones of um, scenery. Um, this one, the bracelet loom, can make a bookmark or cup cozy, pendants, magnets. And there's tutorials, videos uh, from that company online, which I'm so grateful for because I'm a visual learner. and. I'm very excited to try this. So my next stop, I made a purchase of some minis from a shop called Crazy About Yarn. Let's see if I can open this. Sorry for the crinkling. Yeah. So this one used Ontario Mill yarn, um, ethically sourced from around the world. And the mini set that they purchased, here's the colors, is a fingering weight yarn. It's so soft. Oh my. It's um, superwash, merino, nylon, and cashmere. I'm not very good at holding these all up together, but I'll try. No, can't do it like that. Here we go. There. The colors were inspired by the James Weber telescope picture of the moon. Isn't that something? Um, I have other pictures and the other photo shows all the other pictures in this series other planets that inspired her to these hand-dyed yarns. So that was exciting. I just couldn't resist. And again, it was very soft with the cashmere mixed in. Now, another set of minis that I got is from a, a company called Wonder Twins. This one I don't think I can easily open. It's vacuum sealed but i'll show you just the front of the pack there we go these are a mini ornament kit with fingering weight yarns in random colors and patterns there's also patterns for a mini sweater mittens and hat and I'm sure it will make cute Christmas ornaments. I'm not sure that the sweater will fit someone's uh, Ken doll. I know um, some people who follow my pink bathtub knits will know uh, Diane has a doll that she's tried making a sweater for last Christmas. So, but if if not for the Ken doll, it will still be very cute Christmas ornaments. Um, now, the other thing that I saw, and they gave me a brochure about somewhere. Mm, here it is. They have information on their website 
about a knitting tour to Shetland Islands in Scotland happening in 2025. So if there's anyone who's interested in that kind of a tour, you can pop over there and take a look for more information. And again, that is Wonder Twin Fiber Arts that's offering that. Now, another uh, little thing. These are the last two places that I will talk about. A little known fact about me, I really enjoy things made of wood, almost as much as yarn. Yeah. There was a place called The Wood Lot and so many amazing items made of wood. This was the second to last place I saw and I loved so much here. From the website, I learned they are very environmentally conscious and use wood that comes down naturally, small branches that they trim to clear trails and also reclaimed wood. When necessary, they purchase from a local Ontario sawmill. I will definitely be visiting their website to purchase things like earrings, shawl pins, buttons, scarf ties, and barrettes. And finally, the final stop for my day, my one of my favorite non-yarny places was to Sunflower Knit. I fell in love with a hand-woven silk shawl. It had been hand-painted with marigold and iron. People who've been with the website, they know yellow is not my favorite, but marigold in this natural dye took on such a beautiful gold hue. I'm gonna hold it really close so you can, oh, I don't think my camera is picking it up in a good way. I wish that you could see how beautiful this really is. The texture is unlike any silk I've ever felt before. I appreciate this natural dye and there's a rustic way about it that I really love. Um, the artist let me know that her shawls are hand woven by weaving co-ops co in India and she sources them from her supplier who works directly with the co-ops to make sure that people are paid fairly and that the working conditions are good. I love the drape. Oh. Look at the way it just flows and drapes. So there we go. So there we are. I hope you enjoyed hearing about this Knit City adventure. And I look forward to us getting together next Friday. Until then, enjoy your knitting. Enjoy your crochet, and I hope to see you next week.